Hi ladies, um, this is what's going on right now. We're looking at this uh, worksheet that you guys should have in front of you. It says a lecture on object, intent, and circumstance. And then we're also working on this PowerPoint. So have, have this worksheet out and then have this PowerPoint out. Um, let's uh, get started. So again, you should have this, power, this sheet of paper in front of you. The, the key objective that we're doing today is to try to understand the Catholic teaching on object, intent, and circumstance. It's not nearly as hard as one would think. If you don't, ha if you don't understand anything that's going on, this is all in the textbook right here at the top of your page, 148 to 152. So let's get started. Um, this is the PowerPoint that we had at the beginning of, of today's class, and uh, this is what we're working on today. So introducing Catholic ethics. The Catholic Church believes that human actions can be divided into three categories, object, intent, and circumstance. Object, intent, and circumstance. The Church believes that analyzing actions this way makes actions easier to define as good or bad. Just like the case study that we did in class, there's a lot going on in the case study. And when there's a lot going on in anything, it makes it a lot easier to break things apart. And the Catholic Church breaks all things apart with object and intent and circumstance. Moving on. Object. Object is the action that you have chosen to do. Object is the action you have chosen to do. It is the concrete physical action you have taken. Example from the case studies on the lecture seat. So if you look at the case studies, I'll keep referring back to these three case studies. The one about stealing that your mother gave you something nice for your birthday, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, and uh, cheating on an exam. If you have not read the three case studies, I want you to pause the video and reread the case studies. Okay, they're very quick. So the object of the first case study is stealing. The object of the second case study is poisoning her husband. The object of the third case study is cheating on an exam. So the object is always the action, the specific action of question. If you steal, then it's stealing. If you kill your husband, depending on how you kill your husband, it's poisoning. If you're cheating, then it would be cheating on an exam. All right, so that is the object. That is what's going on. If you're speeding down the street, is that the right thing or the wrong thing? Well, the object is actual speeding. Moving on, intent. Intent is the reason why you have actually exactly chosen to do the object in question. The intent, why have you done what you did? Why did you do what you did? Or why have you exactly chosen to do the object in question? Why have you exactly chosen to do the object in question? Now keep in mind, ladies, these can vary drastically. Everyone can have different reasons for doing different things. Kant would argue that it's all intent. The church does not. The church says it's part intent and part object. So why did he steal his CD? He, the son stole his CD to express affection for his mother. Why did the woman kill her husband? The woman killed her husband to get revenge, to move on to another man, to collect insurance, whatever the reason may be. We don't really actually know. And the third... In, um, intent was the student cheated on his test to get into a good college to placate. Placate means to um, pacify, to uh, what's another word? To downplay, I guess, his parents. To kind of make it so it, it, they just, it takes care of all their bickering. Luke 21, 1 through 4, we'll hit next class. That comes from intent in scripture. So the key points that I want you to have down, you can have more than one intent or motivation for go doing good moral acts. This is key. The Catholic Church argues that both the intent and the object have to be good for the action to be considered praiseworthy. The Catholic Church argues that both the intent and the object have to be good for the action to be considered praiseworthy. You cannot have a good object and a bad intent. You cannot have a good intent and a bad object. They both have to be good for the action to be considered good. Kant argues is only intent. Aquinas would disagree. Stealing is wrong even if your intent is a good one. Therefore, the act is not praiseworthy. 
The opposite is also true. Helping an old lady cross the street is a good quote-unquote object. Yet, if you're doing it with bad intent, it, I should say it, doesn't make the act praiseworthy. What would be a bad intent? Well, you guys can figure this out. Doing it to look good. Doing it to, because you know you're going to get paid. Those kind of things. The object intent make up the core of the deciding of deciding whether an act is praiseworthy or not. Let me give a quick case study, ladies. A couple days ago, um, my, my son and I, we pulled up to a gas station because we were looking to get um, batteries. My son got a, a remote controlled car over the weekend, so we had to get batteries. We were at the gas station. A woman came up to me and she said, can you help me? Um, do you have um, whatever those things are called that lift up a car, that lift up a car, uh, a jack? Do you have a jack in your car? Because mine doesn't work. And I said, sure. So I was there and I was and I and I and I asked the lady if she knows how to change a tire. She did not. So me and my son changed the tire for her. At the end, when I was lowering her car down with her spare on it, she had money in her hand. And now I thought to myself, she's going to pay me. She did. She asked me, she she said, here's some money for your trouble. Now would it been would it have been right for me to take that money? Think about it. The object of the act, me changing her tire. The intent, well, I, I don't think my intent was to get paid. Um, the intent was to do the right thing. A woman needed help, you help people who need help. It's basic. Um, was it right for me to accept the money? Think about it for a second. Next is circumstance. Circumstance is a little bit harder. Circumstance are the secondary elements surrounding the components of the moral action, moral situation. The circumstances are those things that affect the person who is performing the action and the content of the action itself. The person who is performing the action and the content of the action itself. So this is all the other stuff that's going on outside of the person that lessens the guilt. An example of circumstance would be the difference between first degree and second degree murder. Um, first degree murder, you, you held on to anger, you bought a gun, all of those things. That's different than um, I walked into a room and I caught my wife cheating on somebody and out of a fit of rage, I killed that person. Those are the circumstances. So applications. One, the boy could have come from a poverty-stricken home. Does that excuse his stealing? No, but that makes him possibly less guilty. All right, arguably so. Two, the woman could have been overwhelmed with anger because she knew her husband was cheating. So that way it lessens her guilt because of all the circumstances surrounding it. Three, the parents could be giving daily reminders that your brother got into Georgetown, just saying, and that could be the stress on the individual, which which downplays, which lessens his or her guilt. Key point, no matter the circumstances, it does not alleviate the guilt if the object and intent are wrong. So it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. If the object and the intent are wrong, it's wrong. Yet, it does impact the level of responsibility of the person and the level of moral goodness or evil of an action. Circumstances impact the level of responsibility of a person and the level of moral goodness or evil of an action. An example, someone cheating on a test just to cheat or someone under a lot of pressure. Both students are cheating. Both students have the intent to cheat, but one is under a lot of pressure and one is saying, screw you, Hellman. All right, we're done. On the quiz tomorrow, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a case study. In that case study, you're gonna give me the object, intent, and circumstance. You're gonna simply list out that you've listened to this and you've understood it. Object is the action. Intent, give me one reason why they're doing what they're doing. Circumstances, all the other stuff that may be going on. Is that person under pressure? Is that person under stress? Was the person forced to do it? Did they come from poverty? Did they not know right from wrong? You could do a whole bunch of things. See you later.